Welcome to this M1 video on moments. So, so far in M1, we've mainly looked at situations that involve particles. And because it's a particle, we have the forces acting on the particle, but we ignore the kind of rotational effects that forces can have. Now, in this uh, particular unit, the moments unit, uh, we'll begin to model objects as rigid bodies. And this then will allow us to look at the size of the object as well as where the forces are applied. So when it was a particle, because a particle is obviously very small, it's just they're all applied at one place. But this time, because we'll have rigid bodies like you know like the size of a rod and so on then where the forces act on that body also has an effect so the moment in terms of this heading moments the moment of a force measures the turn and effect of the force on a rigid body okay and it's the product of the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation, the way the, the body will rotate. So say I have a force F and then I've got a point P, which is where we're, it's um, uh, where the moment of the force is gonna act about. Okay, so if I've got this, then what I end up having is this perpendicular line here and this distance, we'll call it D, there. So that's the distance that I need. So if I have that distance, okay, I've got the moment or the moments of F is going to be equal to the magnitude of F times that perpendicular distance. And this particular moment is going to be acting clockwise. Okay, because if you think there's the point P that this is acting around, it's going to take it going around this direction clockwise. Now, we're not always told that perpendicular distance, okay? Sometimes, instead, we've got a force F, and then we've got, say, P over here, and instead, they give you the distance and an angle. Okay, now in questions like this, okay, so you're given this distance instead. So in questions like this, what we need to do is we need to find the perpendicular distance. So we need, I'll do this actually in black, we need this distance here, this perpendicular distance. Okay, and we can use trigonometry to find that because that will make a that makes a right angle and I want this distance here now this distance I'll just leave it as a question mark okay well I know that um, sine theta will be the question mark over D so that question mark is D sine theta so my formula in this case, and again, it is making a clockwise moment. So I'll have clockwise moment, and it'll be that magnitude of F times D sine theta. Okay, so that is kind of how I go about finding the moments that are acting on a particular rigid body about a point. Okay, and that's what we're going to be looking at just in this video today. 
after this then we'll be looking at resultant moments when there's more than one moment acting upon a body when it's in equilibrium uh, things like rods balancing on you know pivot points and center of mass and so on so there's quite a lot going on in this particular unit but we'll start off nice and easy so let's look at the first example so here we have it we have a six newton force and it's five meters from p and that's perpendicular so our moment is going to be six times five or 30 now the units is newton meters okay because it's the force and times the distance so newton meters it could be newton centimeters if it was in centimeters now looking at the direction of this force this if you think there's the pivot point this force is going to make a circular direction this way which is anti-clockwise so this is anti-clockwise okay so put in the the moment value down the 30 in this case 30 newton meters and the direction that we go in we must always use the direction to calculate it let's look at the second example so in this one we've got it acting at an angle so here we've got that the moment is now the moment of the 18 newton force if i had more than one force that's what i would say so the moment is the six oh 18 sorry 18 times six sine 45 because this if we call it x this is what i want to find as my distance and that's this v value here this is my x okay and then i put it into my calculator and i get 54 root 2 or the three significant figures that's 76.4 newton meters to three significant figures and then the direction we're going to go around this way so we're going clockwise i must always write that direction okay um, this is probably better to put the significant figures bits at the end but either way that is the full moment of the 18 newton force now let's look at the final example so this example has two forces acting on the lamina at the about the point p we need to find the moment of each force so this time the moment of the 8 newton force that's going to be 8 newtons times 3 so 24 newton meters and the direction it's going is clockwise next we want to find the moment of the 10 newton force now for that we need to find this distance here which i'll call x but that distance is 3 sine 70. so we've got 10 newtons times by 3 sine 70 and that is 28.2 newton meters and this one in this case will be going this direction which will be anti-clockwise okay and then that's all there is to it in this particular video 
in the next video we'll be looking at the resultants so you know the two forces that are acting q one's acting clockwise one's acting anti-clockwise if we look at our values overall there's going to be a resultant force of 4.2 newton meters anti-clockwise so when we combine these forces together we're left with one overall force which is 4.2 newtons meters anti-clockwise so that's what we'll be looking at in the next video but for now we're just going to practice finding the moments so if you found this video useful so far hit that like button if you're yet to subscribe don't forget to subscribe and if you're willing and able to help me out financially please hit that join button otherwise let's look at the questions so i've got three questions for you to have a go at um, pause the video now welcome back now let's look at the solutions so for a we get the moment of the four newton force is just going to be four times two which will be eight newton meters now for b we've got the moment now we went obviously the perpendicular distance this distance here in black and that's going to be 8 times 4 sine 30 or 16 newton meters now c now there's no perpendicular distance here that force acts through the pivot point doesn't it so that's going to actually have a moment of zero. Okay, so the moment is equal to zero Newton meters there. And then for D, right, well, we'll extend this line down here. And this is the distance, I'll call it X, that we want to find. So we need this angle, 180 minus 143, gives me that this is 37 degrees. So sine of this opposite over hypotenuse. So x is going to be 4.8 sine 35. So this means our moment is 12 times, um, actually let me, move all of this give it a little bit more room so 12 times 4.8 sine 37 so 12 times 4.8 sine 37 and that is 34.7 so 34.7 newton meters to three significant figures now i realize i missed out the directions so let's do the directions now uh, this is going in this direction so it's going to be anti-clockwise uh, c wasn't going in any direction b is also going around anti-clockwise and a was going this way around so it's going clockwise so sorry about missing out the directions there but there we have them question one is complete and it's nice and straightforward okay question two shows a sign hanging sign is mass 3.5 kilograms so that is 3.5 g newtons hanging down calculate the moment of the mass about p 
the moment about P. So that's going to be 3.5G times by 6, because that's the perpendicular distance. So 3.5 times 9.8 times 6, and that is 205 Newton meters. And that will go, it's about P, it'll go this way around P, so it's going clockwise. Now, moment about Q. So again, it's 3.5 G is the force, and Q is this distance. So that is multiplied by 18 minus 6, or 12. So 3.5 times 9.8 times 12. And that gives me 411.6 newton meters, and that is anti clockwise. Sorry, this 205 was 205.8. I missed out the point 0.8. Okay, uh, you can round them both up to 206. Newton meters and 412 Newton meters if you did them to three significant figures there. Okay, otherwise let's jump on to the final question. So this final question we've given the moment. So the moment equals our F multiplied by, now we want this distance here. So it's going to be 18 sine 30. And this is going to be 58.5. So F is 58.5 divided by 18 sine 30. And that gives me that F is 6.5 newtons. Okay. So that one is just, you know, going backwards, so to speak. And there we have it. The first little step into moments. Hopefully you found this nice and easy. Of course, in the next one, we'll apply it to objects with multiple forces. So that then we can find the overall resultant force. And then we can start looking at when things are in equilibrium, you know, and when we look at center of mass and stuff like that. So it does get a little bit more interesting. Anyway, stick around for the next video or jump into one of my other videos. Either way, I'll see you soon.